Getting possessed by a demon would be truly horrible. I think we can all agree that didn't turn out so great for Reagan in The Exorcist, though she survived the journey, those scars will never leave her. So saying that summoning a demon is foolish because we all know what the outcome could potentially be. So today on Top 5 Scary Videos, I'm going to be counting down our list of the top five scary demons you shouldn't summon in front of a mirror. Before we begin though, be sure to stick around until the end of the video where I'll be responding Responding to some of your comments. And with that, let's jump in. Coming in at number five, we have Azazel from Fallen. Azazel is a fallen angel whose evil influence led to the total corruption of humanity. Isn't that fun? Due to being the leader among the fallen angels, the Jewish Book of Anok commands its readers to ascribe all sin to him. His description has varied throughout history, with him originally being one of heaven's angels, a gloriously beautiful man with wings on his back. However, when he was cast down to earth and became fallen, his beauty became corrupted, in turn taking on a demonic appearance. Once cast down to earth, he became a leader of the Grigori, a group of angels who married mortal women and produced a line of monstrous children. He then began teaching evil to humans, teaching mankind of warfare and the art of deception, before finally teaching us about witchcraft. Now, Azazel has had a big screen appearance in the 1998 crime drama Fallen, which follows homicide detective John Hobbs, who witnesses the execution of serial killer Edgar Reese. However, soon after the execution, the killings begin happening again. In the movie, Azazel evilly outwits Denzel Washington's character, with it being revealed that Azazel's true power is being able to jump from host to host with a passing touch. Coming in at number four, we have Beelzebub. Beelzebub is a Semitic deity that was worshipped in the Philistine city of Ekron. He is often linked with Satan by Christians. In demonology, he's one of the seven princes of the underworld. In Christian writings, the name Beelzebub appears as an alternate name to Satan, and like I said, is commonly described as a placed higher in the underworld's hierarchy. According to occultist Johannes Wierus, Beelzebub is the chief lieutenant of Lucifer, the emperor of the underworld, and presides over the Order of the Fly. Now, throughout history, there have been confirmed reports of Beelzebub here on Earth, with one of the last hailing from France. It began in the early 1600s, when a young nun called Madeleine began having fits, shouting obscenities and making claims she had engaged in lewd sexual acts with demons and witches. It was ultimately decided that she was possessed by none other than Satan himself, aka Beelzebub. The possession only worsened from there, with them being forced to bring in Sebastian Michele, the local Grand Inquisitor, to aid in an exorcism. Coming in at number three, we have Payment from Hereditary. Payment is a spirit named in the Lesser Key of Solomon, and is one of the kings of Kinistan, more obedient to Lucifer than most others, and has 200 legions of demons under his rule. He is said to have a great voice and roars as soon as he comes, speaking in this manner for a while, until the conjurer compels him, and then he answers the questions he has been asked. Payment teaches all arts, philosophy and sciences, and secret things. He can reveal all mysteries of the earth, wind and water, what the mind is and everything in between. However, although what he may offer is knowledge, this does not make him good. His depiction in the Ari Aster movie Hereditary should have taught us this. He is a duplicitous demon and perhaps one of the most devastating entities found in modern horror. In Hereditary, Payment is summoned as a cult ritual by the deceased mother of Annie, played by Tony Collette, who is then forced to protect her family from Payment's persuasions. The evil demon first targets the daughter Charlie before going after the son Peter, and of course Payment invades the body. He commits unspeakable horrors that horror cinema hasn't been blessed with in a very, very long time. Coming in at number two, the Cenobites, Hellraiser. To quote the Hell Priest Pinhead, explorers in the furthest regions of experience, demons to some, angels to others. And that is the perfect way to describe the Cenobites from the works of Clive Barker. The Cenobites are extra-dimensional beings who appear in Barker's works such as the Hellbound Heart, the Scarlet Gospels, and the nine Hellraiser movies. It is said that they can only reach Earth's reality through a schism in time and space, which is opened and closed using certain unearthly artifacts, one of course being the puzzle box called the Lament Configuration. To quote Clive Barker in the Hellbound Heart, why then was he so distressed to set eyes upon them? Was it the scars 
scars that covered every inch of their bodies, the flesh cosmetically punctured and sliced and infibulated, then dusted down with ash. Was it the smell of vanilla they brought with them, the sweetness of which did little to disguise the stench beneath? Or was it as the light grew and he scanned them more closely, he saw nothing of joy or even humanity in their maimed faces, only desperation and an appetite that made his bowels ache to be voided? The Cenobites all have horrific mutilations and or body piercings and wear fetishistic black leather that often resembles butchery garments or religious vestments. Now, aside from their grotesque physical depictions, the Cenobites are terrifyingly potent. They come from a disturbing labyrinth where sadomasochism and torture rule. Their ultimate goal is to drag the victims who open the special puzzle box back to their violent netherworld to suffer endless torture. And finally, coming in at number one, we have Pazuzu, the Exorcist. In ancient Mesopotamian religion, Pazuzu was the king of the demons of the wind, brother of Humbaba and son of the god Hambi. He also represented the southwestern wind, the bearer of storms and drought. Now, although Pazuzu is himself considered to be an evil spirit, he drives and frightens away other evil spirits, therefore protecting humans against plagues and misfortunes. However, don't get your hopes up because this dude is straight up evil. He was, of course, the evil spirit that possessed a young Reagan McNeil in the 1970s novel The Exorcist, as well as the subsequent movie. In the movie, Pazuzu is both named as the demon antagonist of Reagan and the unwitting helper of Father Philip Lamont, as he seeks to free Reagan from the demon's grip. It should be said that no cinematic demon has ever been more potent or terrifying than that of Pazuzu, aside from maybe the red tongue looking demon in Insidious. Not a fan of that one, not a fan at all. Now in The Exorcist, Pazuzu finds its way to the US after being discovered during an archaeological dig in the Middle East. There it infiltrates the body of Reagan with the intention of subsuming her soul. Lovely stuff, isn't it? Pazuzu in turn makes Reagan commit some unspeakable acts, such as stabbing herself with a crucifix in areas that we won't mention here, and of course attacking her own mother, before aggressively vomiting up green pea soup. And then of course the infamous scene of Reagan spinning a head 180 degrees. What a lovely sight. This 1973 Best Picture winner is still one of the highest grossing films ever made. However, saying that, it is best to steer clear of Pazuzu. There's no need to invoke him, especially not in the middle of the night in front of your mirror. Just cover that thing with a sheet. Almighty Lord, word of God the Father, Jesus Christ, God the Lord of all creation, gave to your holy apostles the power to tramp underfoot serpents and scorpions. Well, there we have it. Do you guys agree with our list? Were there any demons that we missed? Leave us all your thoughts and feelings in the comments down below and perhaps we can do a part two. Before I go though, I just want to respond to a few comments from one of our last videos. Top five scary space urban legends. Prep for it said, NASA is a lie, lol. There are still dumb people that think we never went to the moon. Now that is a funny urban legend. Um, yes, people who believe NASA is a lie and people who believe that we didn't actually go to the moon it is completely baffling. Please open a textbook. Please just read any book. Will Lyle said there was no breeze. It was the fact that there was no air resistance to stop the flag from moving, so it appeared like it was flapping in a breeze. To be fair, I didn't even know there was no breeze on the moon. Like, I should know that. <laughs> but uh, that's good to know. I've also heard that they may have put things in the flag for it, for it to stay upright like it was. Charles Eichelberger said, if Lucy is scared of something, then it must be very, very scary. Yes, and space is very, very scary. Did you listen to my list? The fact that there could be rogue planets out there that we don't even know about, that could d one day plummel into it, our galaxy and into our, well they're already in our galaxy aren't they well no they could come through a wormhole into our galaxy and then hurtle towards earth and then hit us and destroy us and we'll be like an ant on the ground in their giant foot that's what scares me john lawrence said maybe we should call it the eye of lucy i respect that Matthias said, Planet Nine from Melancholia. This is what I'm talking about, guys. A rogue planet just coming straight to the Earth. Like, have you guys seen Melancholia? Those last, like, 10 minutes of that movie, that is probably the most anxiety I've ever had in my whole life. Demon Heart 13 said, The Eye of Saturn is just the SCP sent to destroy us all. Very simple explanation. Well, you're very smart, Demon Heart. Thank you for telling us. And on that note, if you haven't already, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss another scary vid. And until next time, see you later.